personal belongings with you at all times. He should be in the alley. All right, got it. You got the goods? All right, I'm sending up the drone now. Got it. on the prize? Results are in from the Massachusetts 2020 ballot initiatives, with voters split on the matters. Question 1, which would require that motor vehicle owners and independent repair facilities be provided with expanded access to mechanical data related to vehicle maintenance and repair, was approved by an overwhelming margin. Question 2, a law which would implement a voting system known as ranked choice voting, where voters rank one or more candidates by order of preference, lost by a 10% margin. The U.S. registered over 145,835 new COVID cases on Wednesday, setting a shocking new one-day record. More than 64,000 coronavirus patients are hospitalized in the U.S., and nearly 3,000 are in ventilators. Health experts warn that because of the holidays and colder temperatures, the number of cases will likely increase dramatically as people ignore advice and gather in larger groups inside. Voter turnout in 2020 has broken both national and state records, and votes are still being counted. So far, 63.9% of Americans eligible to vote cast a ballot in the 2020 election, the highest portion since 1908's record 65.7% turnout. 
The Trump administration has refused to start the presidential transition process, including giving President-elect Joe Biden access to government officials and documents and allowing him to receive the classified President's Daily Brief intelligence report. President-elect Joe Biden has selected Ron Klain to be his White House Chief of Staff. Klain served as Ebola Lazar during former President Barack Obama's second term, leading efforts to guide the country through an outbreak of the disease. In the late 1980s, after graduating from Harvard Law, Klain went to work for Biden, then a senator representing Delaware, and they have remained close confidants ever since. Welcome back to Creative Careers. This week we talked to two people in the fashion industry and asked them what they like about their career as well as where they'd like to be in the future. My name is Jessica Lupion, but everybody calls me Jessie. I am a fashion designer for a company in Sao Paulo. This company has two brands and I am a designer for those two brands. And I'm also a fashion consultant for a company that buys uh, fashion and uh, beauty stuff from China. Hi, my name is Leon. I really like to make clothing. Um, and I'm a senior at Northampton High School. I have always kind of been interested in dressing well from a maker perspective. Like I wanna, I wanna go and design something that I'm really excited about and that I, I, I see as, as, as uh, as making some sort of stride forward. Uh, I always liked uh, fashion and clothing, but you know, for me, for myself, I always like it to dress and to play with makeup since I was a little kid. And I went to the U.S. for a couple of weeks, a couple of years, to learn English, to improve my English. And I met a friend there that she worked with fashion and. I really saw that I could do my fashion into a career. I think it's probably a good way to go about it is make a pair of pants, make a shirt, make a jacket, make, but make it all plain. So know that you can make whatever garment, like know that you can make the basics. And then once that, once I knew that I was able to make the basics, I was really able to branch out because a lot of the principles that are demonstrated in how you make a pair of pants or how you make a shirt can easily be expanded on and applied to a lot of different things. Most people see fashion as something, you know, like doesn't really matter, it's just clothing, but it's, it's way more than that. Fashion is also a social science, you know, like you can um, express yourself you can express uh the the age the era that you live you know and you can express your culture and you can say so many things through fashion without opening your mouth your mouth and that is something very par powerful you can uh look at the hi human history and you can just by looking at the fashion of it you know you can uh, understand what they're going through, what period of time is it, you know, where is it, and and usually people don't don't think about that, you know, fashion is way more than clothing. Welcome to Blue and Gold Games, I'm Coltrane. I'm Alex. In this segment, we play games with the teachers of NHS. This segment, we will be joined by Mr. Heaney, and we will be playing at deep.io. What is your favorite thing about teaching physics? My favorite thing about teaching physics, um, I don't know, it might be the toys. Um, I mean, it's got it's got some really cool toys. It's I also I love physics as a kind of fundamental science. Like I think physics is fundamentally about how the world works and how we interact with the world around us. What sure. do you think is your favorite thing about teaching chemistry? Some of the, some of the same things about physics. Um, the, Ironically, this semester, the, the labs, I think, are really um, a lot of fun. I think that they're, you can get some really nice hands-on ones that sometimes you get more controlled outcomes than you do in physics. I, I guess I enjoy understanding more about the world around me. That seems yeah. to be the recurring theme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that is something that's just great about science is that it's like, it's so applicable. Now it is time for the rapid fire uh, question right. segment. What is your favorite sport? My favorite sport, um, I don't know. Uh, I would say f favorite sport to watch is football. Favorite food? 
Favorite food? Um, I'm going to go with the Paneer Shahi Korma from uh, India Palace, downtown Northampton. Who's your favorite scientist? I mean, given the amount of time I spend teaching high school physics, I feel like I have to say Isaac Newton, because that's basically um, kind of what my what the whole curriculum is on. But um, I'm a big fan of um, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, Carl Sagan, like kind of people who can take these really big ideas and communicate them in a meaningful way to um, a greater population. Favorite beverage? Favorite beverage? Um, I'm going to say uh, the <clears throat> Lemon Lime Seltzer. What was your favorite sub subject in school growing up? It was, I mean, it was math and science. Um, I didn't take physics until uh, my junior year of high school, um, and that, that certainly resonated with me. The Students of Color Lines meets every other Friday from 2.30 to 3.15, and we'd love to have any new members. Mm -hmm.